All right, you guys, listen. It seems like it was not that long. It, it, the, the break didn't seem that long, I guess, because there was so much going on in real time on social media. But the Real Housewives of Potomac are back and they're ready to go. And we got some new additions and some old folks missing. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. Uh, listen, this is my review for season nine, episode one of The Real Housewives of Potomac. Listen, like I said, some folks are gone and some folks are here now. Uh, NECA is gone. Robin is gone. Um, yeah. Candace is gone. And we got two new girls who were introduced to the show. Stacy, um, Stacy and Vivian, who are both friends of Karen's. So I don't know how that's going to go. I mean, yeah, Karen is the grand dame. But do we really need like three direct Grand Dom descendants, um, Giselle, Vivian, and Stacy, all friends like brought in with Karen. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to go, but we'll actually, we'll, we'll see. We will see. But okay, so here's the thing Karen. Karen is, I guess, this is going to be Karen season where Karen lets them beat her up a little bit. Because she's putting herself right out there for a street. They start the show with a reenactment. I said, Lord have mercy. Well, where are we at? Where are we at? It's a reality show. We're doing a reality show. <laughs> and we start the season off with a reenactment. I'm like, sure, reality is real. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It just seems so so interesting that you just yeah, just 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 feel that for a minute. We're gonna start off the reality show with a reenactment. Anyway, but it was it's uh Tuesday, March 19th, uh 2024. Karen actually ends up into this car accident where she is sighted and uh, she got a DUI, and it's her second DUI. Um, like I said, they do a little reenactment. They kind of show swerving on the road, kind of blurred vision um, is the point of view. And then you see a deer, and then you see Irk Bam. What's up with that? Bam. She hits this pole. And I'm like, shoot, okay. So then we go in one month later, we're starting the show one month later and it's Giselle on her way up to Karen's house. Now I said, okay, let's see what's going on with, with, with Giselle. Like what is going on? Because Giselle has actually lost her father. Remember her father passed away. And then now Robin is not on the show. Candace is gone. She can't argue with Candace anymore. I said, she got to make some new friends. She got to make some new friends. But I think some things also probably have changed with Giselle too. But I said, let's, let's just see. She seemed pretty genuine in that first part on her way up there to Karen's house. And we're actually talking about The car was unregistered. The license, driver's license was unregistered. She got a lot of stuff. She got a lot of stuff going on. A lot of stuff she's facing. I can't believe Karen is actually allowing it to be the 
the the storyline to the show, but I was like, okay, Karen, cool. Standing in it. Yeah, that's it. Basically, she's standing in it. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. This is her second offense. Um, so the the her ribs and her ankle or where she had the injuries. Um, that was basically it. Everybody else kind of seemed. Wendy seemed pretty friendly about it. Like she, you know, like what a friend would do. She not beating Karen up about it. She walking lightly around it. Giselle walking lightly, but Giselle's always going to be Giselle pretty much from the door. Mia and Ashley are basically scolding her. This is like in there. This is before you even see their interactions. This is just in the uh, the girls' confessionals and stuff. Um, Mia and Ashley are flat out scolding her. And I'm like, they're going to take their tur turns to get little digs in at her. Um, once you see Giselle and Karen get together, you do see a little bit of a softer side of Giselle. Just a little bit. Again, it's still kind of hard to trust Giselle, especially with the way that her and Karen's friendship goes in and out and up and down and on and on, stuff like that. So, but she comes and she takes her out for brunch. Um, she comes up to the house, picks her up. You know, she makes some little light jokes. You know, I'm driving this Karen. You know, tells Ray, I'm driving. She's going to be fine. You know, this, that thing, and the other. So I'm like, you know, something real lighthearted. And I'm like, that's cool. Karen kind of leads out, tells, you know, it's about things that she had going on. That is how she ended up in the position that she ended up. You know, Giselle wasn't giving Karen... She wasn't put, putting up a smoke screen, but she wasn't giving her complete grace. You know what I mean? She was like, you know, Karen doesn't do stupid stuff. So, like, what? how do we get here? How do we get here? And Karen said, you know, is dealing with the grief of her parents passing and also dealing with marital problems that her and Ray are having marital problems is some of what actually led to that whole situation you know at the end of the day you were drinking and driving you wrong um Marilyn is not very forgiving it just kind of is what it is you just want to, have to deal with it along in that conversation that her and Giselle actually had um they're at this restaurant that's up close to Karen's house and the guy's a real random, and he's like, yeah, you know, Miss Karen, she's never drank here at this restaurant. And Giselle's like, uh, yeah, okay, sir, y'all don't serve alcohol. And he's like, notice the ladies behind you. They all have, like, they had their own liquor they brought in. So here's the thing. If it's an establishment that kind of, like, allows the people to slide their own booze in, I'm sure Karen has slid her booze in there, too. and. I laughed when Giselle was like, I feel like she probably done paid these people off to actually say this to try to convince me or whatever. Try to even give a world class customer service. Yeah, lying, honey. Anyway, but whatever. Now, what I did end up noticing after that, I started getting a little irritated because every time you see Karen, people start mentioning drinking. This is why I was saying, I can't believe Karen actually let herself be the main focus of the season starting out because little stuff like this will happen. As I know, like that's like when you say you're going on a diet and then every time you pick up food, people around you start saying stuff that I don't, that kind of stuff kind of irritates me. It, it does. It irritates me. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, that's, that's not what real friends do. That's what, assholes do oh i thought you were on a diet so does that mean that i'm not going to eat at all you know what i mean so i mean like yeah i mean if they see you sit down with a ham 
and a fork and a knife, then by all means. But literally, you could be eating a sandwich at lunchtime, sitting with them, and that's all you got is the sandwich and nothing else. And they got the buffet, and they're looking at you saying, I thought you said you was on a diet. Being on a diet doesn't mean that you're fasting. You know, so that kind of thing, that's the kind of feel that I started to get because it was like, okay, we're, we keep bringing up this drinking thing. I said, that's going to get real old, real fast, real old, real fast. Next person we see is Mia. Um, yeah, because Giselle and Karen did talk about the new, the two new girls, basically just talked about them a little bit. And they talked about Mia's new man, honey. The little, uh, he's real short. His name is Ink, but he's short. And they were talking about how she stands behind him in a lot of pictures online to make it look like he's taller because he's short. He's short. You know, she's like an Amazon. I said, y'all are petty, 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 very petty. I like it. Um, next thing we see is Mia and Gordon. So Gordon has moved into the building that Mia and the kids live in. And that's an ugly thing. That's an ugly thing. The guy, Inc., actually wants paternity tests for Mia's little boy. Gordon is not on board with it. That is very ugly. A lot of stuff happened in the media, social media. I know Gordon accused Mia of sleeping in the bed with Ink or being in the bed with Ink. And one and the kids say they basically seen it or whatever. It's just, it, it's a whole bunch. It's a whole bunch surrounding her, the kids, Ink, and G. I kind of hate the way that G is putting this. And he looks so weak. He looks weak. They got him. You know, he looks. He don't look like the G that we met originally. Like he, he looked tired. He looks beat down. And Mia is actually using that against him. Uh, well, we help him out. Like, she's acting like he's a senior citizen. I mean, he is a senior citizen, but he's being treated like a senior citizen. It's like, ma'am, you was just screwing this man. Like, stop. Stop. Seriously. Stop it. But it, it, doesn't, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good at all. Um, it, it, I got a feeling like it feels like she's emasculating him. All together, you know, he had like money problems and stuff like that, and all of that. It just seemed like, you know, once things weren't good anymore, she just kind of like threw G away. And, um, yeah, it, it's like she's dealing with him like she's ready to put him in a, in a, in a damn respite care home or something. I don't know. It just, mm, it, it, it's just uh, mm, not too hot, not too hot. Moving on. Ashley, Ashley's next child. Ashley's ready to start dating and she's ready to finalize her divorce, but not so sure that Michael is on board. She's not really sure where Michael is with everything. So same old, same old for Ashley, but she's ready to whore around. So it is what it is. Um, she is sitting around worried about the custody battle. Is there going to be a custody battle as pertains to Michael? You know, Michael is Patty Betty, so we will have to wait and see. Um, I'm not excited about this next step of stuff with Ashley. No, Ashley pretty much bores me. Her storyline just bores me. Wendy, Wendy's next. Wendy resigned from teaching. I was shocked at that. And she's basically nervous about telling her mother. Um, to be truthful, I'm bored with that storyline. Um, it always kind of makes me not want to talk about it very much because I don't want to say 
unkind things about Wendy's mother. Um, and when it comes to that stuff, her mother gets on my nerves. So I'm going to stop now and move on. And then I'm going to move on and I'm going to do a tis- distasteful joke. Okay. I'm going to do a distasteful joke. I am. Let's go ahead and get started and make everybody mad at me already this season. But I've seen something that was funny to me. And um, I'm going to do it in a minute. I'll do it in a minute. Anyway, we see the two new girls. Karen goes and sees Vivian and Stacy. Vivian is a boutique owner inside of the mall. Um, Stacy actually comes into the store. Karen's in the store. Karen's looking for something for her little party that Giselle is putting together. So her birthday's coming. So Giselle's putting together a little party for her. And Stacy is there looking for an outfit for a gala that she's going to, which the dress that she picked out was flawless. It was a very nice dress. It looked very nice on her. Um, Stacy is. She's a, she used to work for QVC. She used to work for QVC. She has moved back to Potomac. She was living in Philadelphia. And they found out there at the store because Karen was like, girl, where's your ring, honey? You had a rock. Where's your rock at? She's a child been separated for a year. And I am in the midst of ending this 16 year marriage and I'm getting a divorce and they were like, Oh, Oh my gosh. And so she ended up telling them that right there at the store. Um, I don't really know how I feel about them too. I don't know how I feel about them too. Again, I think they're like descendants of the grand dame and, um, the grand dame is, only interesting as the grand dame. I don't know that people around her are that interesting. Because the truth of the matter is the grand dame and Giselle, their friends, is Giselle really all that interesting? Like, I mean, let's just be honest. Do you think that Giselle could carry this show? Take Karen away. Do you honestly believe that Giselle could carry the show? I don't. I really don't. I don't think that she could carry the show without Karen. Her and her and Robin together was was something. But I, even with her not being with Robin, I'm just kind of looking like what's going really to happen, Giselle? Giselle. I don't know. And these two ladies, I haven't seen anything from either one of them that's so dynamic that makes me want to turn television back on to see them. And they basically seem like Karen Yes Women right now. But we haven't seen very much of them. But I don't know. I'm not I'm not so sold on them, but we will see. Anyway, so we go on over here. And like I said, the drinking thing keeps coming up. Oh, when they're at the at the store. Oh, is this a is this gonna bother you that we're drinking around you? Like, child, just leave it alone. She got something in a glass. She had some water or whatever she had in a glass. They had what they had. That it just didn't it doesn't need to keep coming up. It's like, ooh, they're they're on my nerves. So I can imagine it got on her nerves. Anyway, moving on. The hat tattoo party is uh, the little birthday party thing that Giselle Karen Shady behind. Listen, she already was telling the two new girls how she was worried about how this birthday party is going to go. She invited them to the birthday party. Um, how the party is going to go because how badly the parties in the past that Giselle has put together for her has been. I said, well, that's shady. Somebody put together a party for you and you talk shit. I said, okay. First day I see that stuck out to me, I said, oh, look, Jacqueline is back. Jacqueline is back. I guess her and Mia are okay. 
or are they? Jacqueline came in. Jacqueline actually, she looked good. Jacqueline looks nice. I said, okay, you looking better. You looking more like you standing on your own and you're not looking like you got called at the last minute to come do a friend spot on the show. So she's looking good. Hair was nice and different things and looked like she actually came with an invitation and not as a plus one. That's what it looked like. It gave in, invite, not plus one. Um, Jazzy is a new person. That is Mia's friend. Um, she is a boyfriend that is plays for the NFL. She's cute. Um, I liked her personality. She just kind of was cute and just kind of looking at the lay of the land. She wasn't doing too much. She wasn't saying too much. She wasn't being overbearing. I was like, yeah, good. That's how you're supposed to come in, reading the room and things like that. So I was like, cool, we're jazzy. I, I think she's cute. Um, then Mia. Oh, God. The dynamic between Mia and Jacqueline, honey. Jacqueline, you still going to be the scapegoat and be the butt of the jokes that Mia kick off. You're going to be the uh to her uh. uh. You still going to play that fool? I said, okay, Jacqueline. First thing she did before Karen got there, Mia going to say, you told me that Karen called you drunk. And Jacqueline's like, uh, uh, yeah, she's throwing you under the bus early on, early on. Anyway, I, this was all before Karen even showed up. I said, oh, gosh. So she's setting you up for the fall already, already. But it swung around real fast, didn't it, on you, uh, Miss Mia? Swung around real fast on you before Karen got there. You trying to start some mess and trying to speak down on Karen at her own birthday party, but it swung around on you so fast it made your head spin, didn't it? it made the curls fall out of one side of your wig. But anyway, here's the bad joke. Okay, so this show, you know, this show has a history of colorism. It has a history of colorism being a problem. It was always, you know, when it came to Candace, when it came to Monique, it was that dark skin brown, that dark skin girl versus that light skin girl dynamic thing. And I'm like, wow, it's it's always hovered over this show. And I said, wow. And I I really hate it because I was like, oh God, here we go. But now here I go with my messy tail, okay? My messy tail. Check this out. Now, that's Stacy. That's the new girl. Stacy comes in. This is what we got. That's new to the show. Now, y'all look and y'all pay very, very close attention to this photo. This is at the party. At the party, the new girl came in with something new. She's what she brought to the show. You could be light skin and dark skin all at the same time. So there shouldn't be any more of these colorism issues because Stacy is light skin and dark skin all at the same time. See? All right. That's my distasteful joke. I know somebody is going to be mad about it. I don't give a shit. I seen it and I was like, whoa, that's ugly. I said, now who did they do that on purpose? Did they do that on purpose? I said, oh, Jesus, okay. All right. Yes, I know it was distasteful, but that's okay. It was funny to me, child. That was funny, especially in this show where they have so many issues about colorism. Child, who cares what color you are, child? Just show up for work. Anyway, but that was it. That's me being shady. They wasn't doing anything or acting out, but uh, I said what I said. It was funny to me when I noticed it. I said, Ooh, girl, piled on makeup much? Anyway. Moving right along, moving right along. She's married to a white man, too. Moving right along. Anyhow, any who. Okay. 
Karen told them, because everybody had hats. Giselle had these hats that she had got for everybody and named the hats. They didn't even get halfway through the little game with the hats. And Karen said, listen, because they were basically, they, they had questions. Giselle was like, some of the girls have questions. Karen said, I'm here. So ask me the questions because I'm sitting here. Ciao. They got to fire questions. Of course, Ashley was, you know, doing the most. So Karen said, let me go ahead and get into this real quick. She said, you know what? I need to know who are my real friends? Because I don't really need no fake bitches around me. So that's what I'm, I'm trying to figure out here today. Which people are actually riding with the Karen Huger train? And who's being a fake bitch? Because I don't really need all that. I said, oh. And also we'll get to Ashley. Ashley comes out with this GNA, which is a brand of clothing that her and um Giselle is doing. So GNA. I said, okay. And Wendy's like, okay. Then Wendy gets a confessional. Wendy's like, this ain't on the website. That ain't this. This wasn't in the show. That, that, that. I said, oh, Lord. So don't tell me GNA is going to be another she by Sheree. I said, now, come on, y'all. We can't be adopting bad storylines from the other housewives. Y'all seeing how the she by Sheree thing went. Don't do that. Don't do that. But I got a feeling that's going to be like a joke that's thrown in their face. I can't even see the two of them collaborating on nothing. That just is weird to me. Anyway, then they flung over into this. This is where I was saying that things spun around real fast on Miss Mia's behind. They actually started talking about her situation. They had questions about the whole dynamic with her, G, and Inc. And uh, and it was kind of rough. It was kind of rough. And Wendy was like, wait a minute, y'all. Y'all done fired at her pretty hard. You know, they basically told her, you ain't really protect your kids as pertains to the social media because just things are plastered all over the place and your kids is going to see it. And you didn't protect your kids because you're the one who went ahead and messed with these two men and got all intertwined in these two men right out into social media. And when you did it, you didn't think about your kids when you did it or you wouldn't have did it because this stuff don't go away. You knew all the taglines was going to come. You weren't protecting your children when you did that. And Giselle just put it to her straight up like that. And so to Karen, and I'm looking at the two of them and I said, oh. Here we go. Here we go. So is this what we're doing, Giselle? You and Karen are going to get tight when it's time to fight the other girls, which y'all going to keep on shading each other. I see y'all. I see y'all. Now, did I like it? I kind of did like it. It was kind of it was kinda heartless, and it was kind of straightforward. But remember, Mia, you started talking smack about Karen's drinking while you're sitting at her birthday party before she even showed up. So the fact that the party hadn't even gotten to the halfway point and you were running off from the table in tears, I said, ooh, the grand dog, the grand dog. And I liked it. And I, you kind of deserved it. It felt like good karma very quickly. That's what it felt like to me. Was it Kind of heartless. Absolutely. But it couldn't happen to a better person. Anyway, moving right along. Jacqueline, I see that you like to play the fool. I see you like to play the fool. And um, I don't know what to say for you. Just lay on down, girl, and let Mia continue to walk you because you just over there spinning in your own words and talking backwards and forwards. I said, uh, I thought you had learned something, but it seems as though you really haven't. They still making jokes about you sharing men. Well, her, they literally asked you in your face, did you have your shot at ink? And instead of checking them, hoes, you start explaining. Nigga explaining. I said, girl, bye. Anyway, so it's going to be interesting um, to see how this season plays out. Um, these new girls, 
mm, I don't know that they're getting ready to bring so much to the show. They better do something and do something fast because right now I ain't all that impressed with them. They just there. And I don't think either one of them is going to be able to take Candace's spot. And, um, or Robin, for that matter. Or Robin. As much as Juan Dixon and Robin got on our nerves with their storyline, I don't see anything from these two ladies that's going to replace what Robin and Juan brought to the show. But listen, we'll see. Week to week, we will see. Um, and happy fall 2024 to y'all, baby. That's it. It's fall 2024. And here we go. It's time for our little reality shows. Let's see what the girls bring. Anyway, y'all have a good one. I'll catch y'all in the next episode. Bye.